All right, let me hear what your thoughts are. Now, Meru Governor Kiraita Murungi has promised to continue funding youth programs in the county. Murungi, who was speaking during the launch of the Meru Youth Service, expressed disappointment at the move by the Meru County Assembly to slash funds set aside for the Meru Youth Service. He promised to ensure that the youth service continues getting funding, even if it means seeking help from international donors. <laughs> But I've said the Meru Youth Service will continue. Because of passion, I'm not discouraged. Either to Kikato Ipesa, I'm going to look for money internationally. Mimi nataka ni mtumie message pale alipo sababu najua kazi anayofanya si ya wananchi wale mtagua. Afahamu ya kwamba kazi ya kutoa pesa ya vijana wa MYS ni pesa ya kudhulumu vijana na hata yeye wadi yake ya kuna vijana hapa. Mbona anataka hao vijana warudi mashinani ambapo hawana ajira, ambapo wanateseka, ambapo hawana kazi? Tunataka turudishe hiyo pesa tena na tunataka mtuunge mkono. Mtatuunga mkono? All right, and uh, right now we want to uh, bring in uh, the Meru Governor Kiraita Murungi, joining us by way of phone from uh, Kakameg, of course, where he is attending the Devolution Conference. Uh, thank you very much, sir, for joining us this morning on News Center. Before we get to the conversation to do with the Meru Youth Service, let's just talk about uh, this conference this time round. Five years on, do you think that Devolution really has inspired or has actually delivered uh, to Kenyans, uh, you know, some sort of percentage on uh, what it was supposed to do? I think the devolution was a great idea, mm -hmm. and it is, we are talking about inclusiveness, we are talking about development all parts of the country, mm -hmm. and then the way to go is devolution, and, and I think it has been very well received by people all over the country, mm. and despite the initial itches, um, I think eventually, after the initial problems are sorted, this is still going to be the greatest achievement that this country has done. And it will be the greatest fruit of the 2010 Constitution. Yes. All right. Uh, thank you for that. You've mentioned that, uh, of course, we're not where we're supposed to be yet. What can you say have been the biggest uh, challenges? Because this also just sampling the views from Kenyans, they still have quite a number of issues to do with the basic things from, uh, from health, from education. There's still quite a number of Kenyans who really have not felt, um, you know, anything uh, that has happened with regard to devolution. They've not felt that their lives have indeed improved. So what can you say has been the biggest challenge? First, I think this is a new, it's a new project, it's a new program, and it will take time for it to be fully established. So Kenyans need to be a little more patient with it. Uh, secondary, there has been tensions in the past between the national government and the county governments, which have caused a lot of delays in delivery of both cash and projects. And I think we are trying to address that now. We, as the counties, have moved from that era of confrontation with the national government, and now we have emphasis, we have moved on to cooperating with the national government. And I think things are moving faster with the ministries where we are cooperating. Um, we know the national government has also been facing some challenges, especially because of the prolonged uh, campaign period last year.
So we hope the next year is going to be a better one than this one. But also we are facing some challenges with the people themselves because they are used to a system and we are introducing change. Uh, so there is resistance. We are facing you know, the issues, the social forces of gravity pulling us down even as we want to move. So I think there is a lot of transformation to take place, uh, even at psychological level, for devolution to be fully appreciated by the people, but also by bureaucrats. And uh, devolution can be frustrated by, you know, central, centralized thinking at the top. And people are protecting their tariffs and I think time has come to accept that things have changed. Uh, you cannot continue controlling from the top while we want the game to move to the bottom. And let's also just discuss something else that has, of course, affected uh, devolution. It hasn't been a rosy journey. Uh, when, you, when you look at the, the numbers coming from the Auditor General's office, talking about corruption and how corruption has been devolved uh, to the counties. Uh, first of all, do you think that, um, uh, you know, what would you say is, has been the impact of uh, corruption in the counties? A lot of monies have been lost, you know, in the counties. And that's the reason why, you know, some services still are not in effect. No, it is true. Corruption is still a very big problem, both at the national and the county level. And I think much more efforts need to be, to be done. A lot of money has, has been lost, especially in the past. And we are also trying to address it through various mechanisms. But I think it means a very concerted effort. In the past, we have, been, we have just concentrated on blame games. We have politicized the corruption. But there has really been no serious effort to, to fight it as corruption. We just use it to identify enemies and, and politicize it. So I think I refocus on corruption, looking at best practices elsewhere, it will be what will help both the national government and the county governments in dealing with this issue. Massive wastage, massive plunder of resources is taking place you know, both at the national and the county levels. We cannot hide from that fact. But is there a way really to, give, to keep the governors uh, in check? Because like I mentioned, we've seen, you know, these reports from the Auditor General's office uh, really painting a, a horrific uh, picture um, of really what happens in the counties. But still you find that, you know, the same, uh, you know, leaders are still have, have been elected even another, uh, for another term. Um, is there really a way to keep the governors in check in a way that they actually, um, uh, you know, would be uh, prosecuted? Uh, when it comes to issues to do with corruption? Yes, it did, you know, the way that the corruption authority was conceived, it was intended to, to have its own prosecution powers. Mm -hmm. But the anti-corruption authority now is just a research body, just collects evidence and hands it over to other people. Mm -hmm. And, you know, corruption is everywhere, it's uh, police, in the judiciary, even and corruption officers, some of them. So it's a massive, massive pro uh, problem. Uh, you know, I think you know, the entire uh, fight against corruption needs to be revisited. And we are in this partiality, uh, which, because now it's, it's really left to the media to say this one this one is corrupt and all that, but beyond that, the stories just die. All right, let's now turn our attention to uh, the conference which starts today. What are your expectations of this uh, conference this time round? I have very, very high expectations of this conference. Uh, it is the first one we are holding since the elections. Mm. And the mood in the country is right, it has changed. Since the, hand, the handshake, we see very, very positive political environment uh, in the country. Uh, even Kisumu, where I passed through, I see things are, you know, shaping up very well. Uh, so I think we should take opportunity, this opportunity you know, to move the, <coughs> the devolution agenda forward. Mm -hmm. We are looking to working more closely with the national government during the conference. 
we need to address the challenges that we have, we have been facing, especially in the flow of funds from the national government to the counties. We need to share experiences. There are some counties which are doing better than the others. We need to learn from those experiences. And we also need to address the basic problems that other counties are facing. So I see this as an opportunity for governors to learn from each other, even as much as we learn from the resource people, you know, who we have identified. And uh, also for us to join hands as we move forward into the second phase. Yeah. All right, let's now talk about the issues that uh, we had mentioned earlier to do with uh, your county, and it has everything to do with the Meru Youth Service. First of all, why is there resistance uh, from the Assembly when it comes to funding of this service? First, let me say the Meru Youth Service is a great idea. Mm -hmm. In Meru, we say we are making Meru great. And we cannot make Merun great without the energies, without the support of our youth. Uh, secondary, youth unemployment, youth poverty, youth apathy and hopelessness are a major problem in this country. Mm -hmm. And that is where we are, what we are trying to address through the Meru Youth Service. You know, we want to decolonize the minds of our youth. We want them to look at the opportunities which are available in the Meru County so that instead of waiting, Mm -hmm. for white collar employment, which is not available. You know, we can use the energies of our youth in exploiting economic opportunities within the county. We can generate employment through labor intensive methods. You know, we need universal health care. We can work the youth as community health workers, you know, and all that. Mm. So it's a great project for solving youth unemployment in my county. And I was working with MCAs, but unfortunately, there has been a little misunderstanding, mm -hmm. some lack of information. Some of them felt there needed to be you know, more involvement, especially even in recruitment of the, of the youth. I'm addressing that. And uh, I believe they acted in anger. They are, mm. they are a bit emotional. But as the temper has cooled down, we won't get them back, mm. and we are going to move on with the project. But I've said this project is so important, we cannot allow it to die. It has to continue. And even if they deny us funds, I'll, I'll use my friends in the NGO world, the international community, private sector, to get the program going on. Mm. Right. Thank you very yes. much for speaking to us. That's the Meru Governor Kiraitu Murungi talking to us about the Devolution Conference and, of course, just uh, his insights about the last uh, uh, five years of uh, devolution. We now want to also just hear the thoughts of uh, Mandera Governor Ali Robert with regard to uh, the conference and the strides that Mandera County has made so far in its agenda. Let's just take a look at that conversation that the county government can do, uh, like uh, internal infrastructure, even if we cannot build tarmac roads across uh, uh, 20, I mean, the, the whole county, we are able to do uh, all weather marab roads that are motorable by small vehicles. And we've managed to do almost uh, 1,100 kilometers over the first five-year term to address the transportation within the county. However, the prices of commodities is not controlled only by a road network within the county, but goods leave Nairobi and uh, land in Mandera. The cost of products is twice as much as it is in Nairobi because of uh, the high cost of transportation, because of the, 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 the lack of connectivity to the national uh, uh, road network. For example, if you take, uh, there's a lot of construction ongoing owing to devolution, but a bag of cement in Nairobi is less than 600 uh, Kenya shillings, but in Mandera is 1,100 Kenya shillings because a 20-ton lorry can only carry 400 bags of cement from Nairobi, and uh, the, the cost of leasing, I mean, uh, and, and, and the transport uh, of that lorry for the 20 ton is, you know, 200,000. Even before you put uh, in the buying price, you have 
the cost is, uh, you know, the, the, the transportation becoming 500 Kenya shillings per bag to Mandera. And that is the challenges that we have. And this is why we say, even realizing, you know, the Big Four agenda, uh, which is supposed to be, uh, uh, you know, and uh, we, we are all, all the county governments are aligning their CIDPs in line with national aspirations. Uh, it is becoming impossible for some of us because for you to realize the Big Four agenda and, and the enablers are not in place, then we don't have level playing field for these counties. Uh, you know, whereas a lot of uh, other counties may have the luxury of discussing, such as uh, what uh, uh, my, my colleague, the senator, discussed about, uh, you know, the, 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 the formula to be changed. But we don't have level of playing field in these counties, and we don't have the luxuries that uh, Murang and others have. Uh, there is need for the government to have deliberate uh, investment in terms of national road linkage of all the 47 counties, national electricity grid connection, in order to make sure that when we think of manufacturing and industrialization, then you know, for Mandera, you think about it, we need it. The opportunities are there. But unfortunately, the cost of production will be higher because of transport, uh, uh, lack of uh, road, you know, road infrastructure connecting us to other counties, as well as electricity grid that uh, before industry is set up, they will have to do their feasibility study to find out how, 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 how economical it's going to be for them to invest. But virtually whatever you produce in Nairobi can be produced in Mandara. All right. So from uh, Governor Ali Robert, we now want to hear some of the expectations at the end of the conference as outlined by Muranga Senator Irungu Kangata. All the deliberations that have happened in that conference, we agree what are the legislative interventions that we need to undertake, what about policies, and therefore, from where I see it, I would imagine I'm waiting to hear what are the proposed legislative steps that need to be taken to ensure the ideas that have been discussed in Kakamega, there are issues that can now be taken to the Senate for discussion and maybe in the National Assembly. So I'm expecting, for instance, uh, we are told how shall the counties come up with a framework of ensuring the so-called housing projects for the government are realized? What about health care? What about, for instance, manufacturing? Do we need to change some laws to ensure that is realized? Once we are able to come up with those policies and agenda, I can be able to go to my people of Moranga and tell them, this is what we have discussed, and these are what we are supposed to happen in our county. Uh, for instance, in my county, there is one very pet project, which, from where I sit, I would want it to be completed. We had uh, a very good initiative where the county came up with uh, a manufacturing entity located at Maragua where uh, it was being proposed that we establish a milk processing plant. You know, Muranga is one of the most, uh, the, the best producing counties in terms of milk. So our farmers, I think uh, about 80% uh, of our residents, they are somehow connected with a cow. So therefore, if that project is able to be completed, I think that will be a major step for our people going forward because we'll be able to create employment in that region. We are going to add value to our farmers. And therefore, I'm expecting that conference in Kakamega, for instance, to tell us how do we come up with policies or laws to ensure that projects are realized. And then when we go back to Moranga, we are able to implement and that project and then is therefore implemented. Once it is completed, I foresee several benefits for the people of Moranga. For instance, number one, the producer price will go up currently is averaging at 35 shillings per litre. It may go up to about 40, 45 or even 50. Also, I expect farmers to be given some shares in that factory so that they also get dividends at the end of the year. So those will be benefits. And if in Kakamega we can sit down, we govern, uh, senators, governors, MCAs, we discuss 
Of course, we shall not discuss Moranga in particular per se, but we will talk holistically, and then we are able to get those ideas. We supplant them in Moranga County. And for instance, that project, which, which also fits within the, the, the so-called Big Four agenda of the government, because it's about manufacturing, it's about food security. All right, that is Senator Iringo Kangata on his expectations of the devolution conference. We take a short commercial break. When we come back, we'll also be looking at uh, news taking center stage across our borders. Don't go away. <laughs>